You're in the cinema watching a 3D movie with your new girlfriend. But then you wonder something. What if we could watch this movie in 4D? Is that even possible? How many Ds even are there? Well, Kyle, even though I find your obsession with male genitals quite concerning, I can tell you that there are way more dimensions out there than the three-dimensional movie you're watching right now. In fact, there are a total of 11 out there, and we live in a 4D world. If you include time, of course. But what if we could have access to the 11th dimension? What superpowers would that give us? Get ready to have your mind blown, Kyle, because we're going on a journey way more interesting than the Magic Mike sequel. Quick, let's go now. Your girlfriend won't even notice that she's fantasizing about cheating on you anyway. Right, anyone who went to school knows that two dimensions is left and right like a plane, and three dimensions is up and down. You know, volume. Like your giant head. But Kyle, have you ever thought about the first dimension, 1D? Or even the zero dimension? Yes, that's just a singular point, but the first dimension is a line. And far enough away, anything can look like a point, including that line. But here's where the weird stuff truly begins to happen. See, the donut you want to eat, the sh car you drive, and the hobo on the side of the road over there. Oh, someone should probably check on him. All of that is made up of 3D material consisting of something from the first dimension, according to string theory. I know that's a mind f but stick with me, because how even is that possible? Well, many scientists once thought matter was made up of just 17 particles. You know, all the stuff that is made up of protons and neutrons, which in turn are made up of things called quarks, along with other weirdly named stuff like positrons and gluons. But then, physicists realized there was more to these particles than just them existing. They needed to explain why they do what they do. One of the answers? String theory. That 1D line I showed you before is literally a string 10 to the negative 35 meters long. So basically, it looks like a point everywhere. And that 1D string could be the reason for why all matter in the universe is three-dimensional and behaves the way it does. And the crazy thing, Kyle, these strings have access to extra dimensions. That's an extra six for themselves on top of the three that we use. That's right, our universe actually has, in this theory, ten total dimensions, including time. And in order for these strings to create the matter needed for stars and galaxies and that hobo that people should now seriously check up on, they have to be able to vibrate, fold, and bend in a way that even Cirque du Soleil would never be able to do. Or basically how I bend when I'm performing a Romanian deadlift. But here's the thing about the strings. They can't make all the matter in three dimensions we know. That's why they need those six extra dimensions to create all the particles I mentioned before. Yes, dimensions 5 until 10 are all inhabited by those 1D strings. But how do they even get access to those extra six dimensions? Easy. They use something called a Calibai Yao Manifold, a 6D shape that looks like this to your 3D human eyeballs. You know, if you could see the first dimension. It's literally on the scale of a 1D string, an origami prison, or a portal. Oh, you like this, do you, and you want access to those six dimensions as well? <laughs> no, we cannot. Not even a fake ID would get you in. But the good news is, is that this theory is our gateway to the 11th dimension, Kyle. It's called the Bulk, a place of wonders and where all universes, including ours, live. And we're gonna go there. See, everything you thought about exploring different universes through dimensions from your favorite sci-fi movies is actually wrong. The 5th to 10th dimensions affect our entire universe, known as a brain, but also affect all universes in a place called the Bulk. Here are where all universes or brains live. Each of them might have different properties, different life, and potentially a reality where Harambe never died and actually the world was just a better place. But how do we get to the bulk? Well, there's only one particle that can escape our brain to get there. A graviton. Yes, that's a theoretical particle that controls gravity. Or even just is gravity. But let's go now, Kyle. It's waiting for us. We can begin our search in the universe for a gateway to the bulk. But first, we need to compactify ourselves into strings and then become gravitons because they're the only things that can actually leave into the bulk. And then we can follow the real graviton to the 11th dimension. Oh, no, you won't need a wormhole or a black hole. Every point in our brain already touches the bulk. The graviton doesn't escape through a hole, it simply vibrates through dimensions we can't access. Until now. You're welcome, by the way. Let's go! Wait, you don't want to become a graviton? You don't think it's a little bit late now? Okay, fine. There is still another way. We could also just ride the graviton like a really small pony. This way, you shift your state of being into one that knows no limits and can travel through all ten dimensions at the quantum level. 
But for that, you'll still need to transform into a closed string. The only things that can go to the 11th dimension. Still no? I mean, look at your arms. Look at them. They're practically strings already. Fine, put in your damn spacesuit, but this is the last way. At least my friend owes me a favor anyway. Yes, this is Gravy. Spawn a black hole at my location, please. Bit more to the left. Bit more. Perfect. Yes, I do have more friends, Kyle. If you're wondering, he slept with my wife once, so it's the least he could do. Our next step is to go into this and reach the singularity so we can exit to the 11th dimension. Are you ready? Yes, you finally grew some balls? Okay, let's go. We made it to the 11th dimension. There are a few things you really have to understand about this place, Kyle, but for that, you'd have to be a bit smarter. Fortunately for you, today's sponsor is brilliant. This is my go-to app for learning actual science without needing to go through Kalabayao manifolds first. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in astronomy, math, physics, and even data and programming. If you want to think in higher dimensions, Brilliant actually builds your critical thinking through problem solving, not memorizing. Each lesson is hands-on, visual, and six times more effective than just watching a lecture. And amazingly, all the lessons can be done right on your phone so you can do them whenever you have time, like on a trip through the universe. Personally, I've been diving into their math courses focusing on all levels of sequencing, algebra, calculus, all so I could understand string theory, mostly. Whether you want to understand how to think like a scientist, make your own circuits, or process astrophysical data with Python, Brilliant makes it fun and intuitive. And you can try it all for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash gravitypool, along with 20% off the annual premium when you realize how much you love it. And now that you can understand this, Kyle, you're no longer in space as you know it. The bulk isn't empty, it's an 11 dimensional structure filled with infinite brains, or at least probably a lot of them. And the space in the bulk is different than you know from your universe. And here it's most likely something called an anti de Sitter space. Now this sh is weird as f An example. Firstly, if you entered the bulk on that side and I'm on this side and we both moved forward, the distance between us would go from say 1000 kilometers at the start to one meter and yes, that's when you are moving forward. That's just how the space behaves. This means that massive distances in a universe can become handshake distances in the bulk. The further you go into it, the more tightly space folds in around you. Secondly, because the hyperspace in the bulk behaves like this, other brains could be almost unimaginably close. What looks like billions of light years apart from our brain that might just translate to a really small distance in the bulk, even something like 0.1 millimeters. So uh, we'd have to get really small to travel in the 11th dimension between brains. In theory, maybe even two dimensional. Now humans might imagine brains as flat planes because that's all they can visualize. But the reality is more complex because of course it is. These brains may resemble curved membranes, spheres or higher dimensional toruses, like donuts for gods. But the bulk that surrounds them is not a void of nothingness. Yes, from the outside, we might look like PlayStation 2 characters right now, but it's what's needed to explore this place. Speaking about exploring, we have to be careful, since the brains are so extremely close together that they can end up being very unstable. Any slight change in circumstances and catastrophes could unfold. The thing that's in charge of whether that happens or not? A bulk field! Yes, this bulk field regulates brains and is an unseen network of energy that moves throughout space and applies forces on things it meets, you know, like all other fields. Bulk fields, though, make these things stable. So no, it's not a field where bodybuilders come to bulk up before their contest. Here is the problem, though, with the bulk in general and the tiny space between each brain. You see, our universe, or brain, is expanding. We know this. So wouldn't that become a problem if the space between each brain is so tiny? Things would collide and could produce another big bang, right? Well, Kyle, the brains actually balance this expansion with a pressure that keeps them from buckling, colliding, or exploding. This is kind of like if you were wanting to do a squat, but someone kept pulling you up again. If this pressure to keep brains stable did not exist, that would be the worst news ever. And yes, worse than I saw my friend, you know, with my wife. Because our universe could be physically destroyed, or our universe will survive with no life, planets, or extreme space objects remaining. Or even worse, the universe next to us would fly from the opposite direction, and so gravity would stop behaving normally. Nor at all. And so planets and stars and galaxies would just fly apart immediately, and without hesitation. But don't worry, Kyle. Thankfully, that beautiful bulk field from before prevents this from happening. In theory. And you know whose laws predict this and are saving us right now? Einstein! 
That's right, general relativity is so overpowered it's expected to exist even in the 11th dimension. Now that you understand all that and we're safe, we can continue. And it's time to actually properly explore this place. But I just realized something. I'm home. Yes, Kyle, that brain right over there is where I grew up. My whole family lives there. And all this time I forgot to tell you that I'm a bulk being. And now you are one as well. Oh, stop panicking, you wussy. You're a bulk being now. A pathetic thing like pressure and air doesn't apply to you anymore. You are an entity in the bulk and can travel to different universes now without protection. Which means now you don't suddenly lose your all for broccoli haircut, unfortunately. But now the 11th dimension fun can really begin. You probably want to visit other universes, other brains. One where you don't wake up every single video and get tortured. One where your ex-girlfriend didn't leave you. And one where you are the most important being in that universe. In fact, I know just the right one for you. Welcome to the universe where broccoli haired nobodies with red shirts and cargo shorts rule the world. You are now in the top 0.000001% of this universe. You are truly important. Just kidding. Oh, you should have seen your face. You truly looked happy for once, Kyle. Wait, you want to go back? Okay, sure, buddy. Let's do it. Well, look at that. A fiery hellscape. Nothing is left. That's right. Time in every brain is different. In the time that we went in and out of this universe, 500,000 years went by, and it seems like there was some sort of revolution in your universe. We better get out of here quickly, Kyle. They really don't like you anymore. See, by being a bulk being and entering and exiting brains, you created gravitational anomalies, which proves that the bulk exists, because if it didn't, the value of the gravitational constant would remain the same all the time. And that kind of knowledge can destroy civilizations, even if they are only small gravitational anomalies. The desire to harness gravity leads them all to war and destruction every time. And thus, also, your dream universe will end. Unlucky. But while 500,000 years went by in that universe, here we have bulk local time, and it's still the same. Even the bulk has rules, no backwards, only forwards. So while each brain has its own time, the bulk has the master time. And no, they luckily don't have f***ing daylight savings around here. Okay, it's time to go back. Traveling to this place should make you feel a lot of tidal force, by the way, but don't be afraid. Just a little bit of stretching and squeezing and bending. Not that you'll feel much of it anyway as a bulk being. First, we go back to the brain we came from, then we travel through it like a graviton, and we're finally back at, uh, wait, where are we? Oh, well, apparently because we entered a little bit too high up above the brain, thanks to the anti desitter space from before, rather than being one AU from the sun as we planned, we now ended up 10 billion light years away from Earth. That's totally my bad, Kyle. That one AU distance up here really equals 10 billion light years down there. So we probably should have just, you know, entered in at that point. It's a great way to move heavy stuff around universes or help other civilizations, but uh, not like this. Well, I guess we'll just have to walk our way back, somehow. Wait, what is that noise? Oh, 